smallest team from around anywhere. We weren't even picked to win around here. But in the summer of 66, the East Rochester Senior Little League team ran off 10 straight wins to find itself playing for the world title. None of us could really believe that we had gotten to the point of being in the final game of the World Series. Um, a town the size of East Rochester. The task at hand was daunting. Most of the boys had never been away from home, had never played under lights, and weren't given much of a chance against the best teams in the world. When we played all the teams, they were much bigger than us. Guys with goatees and stuff. So it's sort of like the David and Goliath story as well. We're truly the underdog from a little town from East Rochester, that's for sure. And we were playing uh, you know, La Habra, California. They looked like the uh, L.A. Dodgers when they came out. And, uh, you know, they were a bit in intimidating. A small contingent of only about 75 fans from East Rochester had made the trip. But first baseman Larry Brothers remembers that during the course of the final game, it started to seem like a lot more. I think we had a lot of people from um, the teams that we had beaten from Mexico and Canada, fans that were there that were rooting for us too, because again, we were the underdog. When the last California batter grounded to the mound, pitcher John Kukinda snared the ball and tossed it to Brothers, and the little team that couldn't did. There was this incredible wave that just washed over everybody and just seemed to lift everybody when the, when the realization of what had happened really struck us, and we just went crazy. Infielder Jim Carley remembers how it didn't stop there. We were all blown away when we when we landed down in Rochester Airport. The thousands of people. It might be the biggest day any, anybody greeted anybody at the airport because we had car lines all the way down Elmwood Avenue and everything else. I mean, the parade was uh, all the way from the uh, airport all the way to East Rochester. Forty years later, the hair is grayed, the reflexes have dulled, but the bond between the 14 members of the team, half of whom still live in East Rochester, is as strong as ever. We maintain still a relationship. We're like brothers. We've known each other for like 50 years. Special uh, friendships, special love. A bond that will never break. It's something that's I'll die with, you know? A moment that you're going to cherish forever. I don't think it's something that you can ever forget.